Hi everyone, welcome back to the Fast Pass and Furious podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Skylar. And I'm Amanda. We are so happy to have you back. <laughs> in, our, in our arms. <laughs> We're just cradling you like a small baby. <laughs> um... But yeah, we have missed you. Well, it hasn't been that long for you, but it's been long for me. Yeah. Talking to you guys. I have been in the middle of a move, and during this move, I get to make some pretty fun stops along the way. My first stop is at Skylar's house, <laughs> and that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, Amanda's left out. Yeah. And I'm crying about it every <laughs> night. Well, my next stop is tomorrow at Amanda's house. <gasps> what? That's right. <laughs> knock, knock, ding dong. <laughs> no more crying for me. <laughs> and we're gonna record another episode then and now Skylar's gonna be left out <laughs> ha, ha, ha. oh wow <laughs> so in this week's episode we are going to be talking about some movies that we think are kind of left out of the Disney World equation a little bit and and we want them to be you know plugged into that equation so we're gonna take the liberty of taking these movies and we're going to come up with our own ideas so that the Imagineers can just steal these from us mm -hmm. and put it into Disney World. Yes. And that's what we're doing. Yes. I also... We Go ahead. <laughs> um, I think that also on my list, I do have a couple movies that are represented in the park, but pretty mm -hmm. minimally. And I want more so yeah yeah I have I have a few of those too I have I have some as well like sure you can find their doll in the store but right but I want more yeah mm -hmm. I want an entire land <laughs> <laughs> right all right well um so we're just gonna be going back and forth and sharing our ideas we haven't heard each other's ideas yet so um we're all gonna be hearing them together it's so, gonna be a surprise. It's a surprise. <laughs> so which one of you would like to share first? I'll go first with my first idea. All right. Okay. So here's my pitch. We have Disney Junior characters mm -hmm. in Hollywood Studios. They are kind of a rotating lineup about what's popular with Disney Junior at the time. You know, to appeal to the small children. Mm-hmm. But where, I ask you, is the representation for teens to early adults? Where is Disney Channel? Oh. I am thinking <laughs> there needs to be some sort of... Look, we, we've had a teen eight club like in the 80s, 90s <laughs> with a Videopolis. We've already touched on Videopolis. This is not going to be that. I want a DCOM paradise. Oh. I agree. I think that that's a good idea. This is going to be more for the 90s to 2000s kids. These are people who are just, you know, burgeoning into adulthood and who – are starting to make their own money and, you know, wondering where to spend that money. And you're losing a lot of um, revenue, Disney, by not appealing to this particular audience. You have things that appeal to adults. You have things that appeal to small children. Where are the things that appeal to young adults and teens? Now, I'm a little biased here because I don't really care about any of the newest DCOMs. I'm thinking things like <laughs> Halloween Town, Xenon, Phantom of the Megaplex, Cheetah Girls, Luck of the Irish, right? Things that have a lot of world building in them, you know, Halloween Town, Xenon, things mm -hmm. like that. There's a lot of world building. And, and when, I, when I thought about Luck of the Irish, I was thinking, hmm, 
that's a holiday. We could do that for St. Patrick's Day. And then I was thinking, what could this attraction be? I know I haven't really said what the attraction is. <laughs> this is going to be kind of a walkthrough attraction, which kind of sounds dumb, but I think it would appeal to this audience. It's it's a very well-themed walkthrough attraction. Like, imagine during Halloween, it's a Halloween Town one. You've got the big pumpkin, you know? You've got you know marnie (laughs) you got the skeleton taxi driver i don't know you get behind the scenes look at how these were made you get fun facts about it and at the end you have a small store this is where disney's going to make their profit profit they have special limited time merch for these really old decoms that change seasonally or holiday wise throughout the year so you have a limited period of time to get that 13th year hoodie that you want so bad Mm -hmm. i want the 13th year hoodie and i want the luck of the irish (laughs) plush but you can only get that this time it's going to be a real money maker i think it's great and i want more representation for the teens (laughs) i think that (laughs) i think that's a great idea and funnily enough halloween town was also on my list (laughs) because okay because i think that this would be a really easy inclusion right and this was kind of one of the more simple ones on my list but i was thinking okay at disneyland they at halloween time they usually have a giant pumpkin on main street but it's like in the shape of a mickey head Mm -hmm. So I think we could do at Disney World, we could have the Mickey pumpkin, but I think what would be also fill that fun Halloween time, um, cool, cool feeling and also would really attract um, the millennials and the, the younger, the younger kids like us um, would be if you put the pumpkin from Halloween Town on Main Street, like kind of where they put the Christmas tree during Halloween time. And I think that would be really easy and simple. And it, I think it'd be really fun. I think we can all agree that Hall- Halloween Town needs more representation. Yeah. The park. <laughs> and, and you're right. Like that would just be such a simple addition to make. And they could sell themed merchandise for Halloween Town. And like, I know like you have to be able to sell merchandise. If you're going to put a new idea in the park, it has to be merchandisable. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And Halloween Town is. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, you could I think sell- that a lot of these old movies are. I think that there is a huge nostalgia factor for people our age. And even a little bit older for some of these older decoms. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Did they used to have like a little parade thing for High School Musical? Yes, they sure did. Yeah, I think they could do something like that for like the Cheetah Girls and like those that are like mostly musicals. Because obviously, like, the 13th year, that wouldn't work for that. <laughs> but, like, the Cheetah Girls, High School Musical, stuff like that, if they could just put them all on one float and send it down <laughs> Hollywood Studios. And no one would... would know what was going on except, like, 20-year-olds. It's just, like, 20 kids on a float. <laughs> 20. Some are in Cheetah Prince, some are wearing, like, <laughs> basketball uniforms. Well, okay, you know how some they are have, wearing like... plaid, I guess, for Camp Rock. <laughs> you know how they have, like, the princess floats? Yeah. Where they'll have, like, one princess on one side, and then they have, like, the facade separating them? It could be like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think this would work really well in Hollywood Studios. I agree. Yeah, the because stupid it- park. <laughs> yeah, like the park where they have no theming and they're just like, just if you, if it doesn't fit anywhere else, it goes in Hollywood Studios. Yeah. I agree. But like they had that period with like the Mickey Mouse. They had that like, I don't remember what exactly they called it, but it was like Max Goof came out and he was wearing like the little laser costume and like Mickey Mouse was doing 80s aerobic stuff was that like 90s night at disneyland was that what that was i have no idea but well that, that would be a very good time like to incorporate like xenon and <sighs> and halloween like... town yeah and phantom of the megaplex yeah and also they and my day with the president's daughter <laughs> <laughs> and johnny tsunami um i don't know how long is like 
DCOM's been around. They just celebrated an anniversary, didn't they? They just celebrated their 100th DCOM, but they released uh, like seven a year. So um, I actually did a little bit of research on it, and the first DCOM I think was in like 90... Mm. Let me just... Was the first DCOM Hocus Pocus? <laughs> um, no, that wasn't a DCOM, technically technically the first decom was in 1997 under wraps it was about a mummy ah you remember that one i, I remember guess. that one yeah and then well, the next year after that is when halloween town came out and brink came out there were movies that aired specifically on disney channel but it was not dubbed um a disney channel original movie you know what i mean right mm-hmm. okay well what I was getting at is maybe even if this wasn't like, which I think this should be a, a forever standing attraction, but even if it wasn't, if they just wanted to do something to like represent this for like a DCOM anniversary, like I think that would be cool just because you know, it does target like our demographic. You know how um, Universal has the tribute store that is only a seasonal store that pops up yes. in Mardi Gras times and then that becomes the Halloween store i don't know what it's called in the halloween time um that pop is the same location but it pops up for um halloween yeah and it it, this store they think they might have a christmas one as well that pops up there but it's closed most of the time and then it's just a pop-up store they could have a pop-up store every now and then for you know nostalgia decom purposes (laughs) yeah that would be good they could have like little themed snacks and everything too like universal does Yes. This is a good idea, Disney. I hope you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they like wanted to you know how like uh Disneyland had that nineties night, they could have like a decom night and have yeah. like would, exclusive meet and greets, exclusive merchandise. And I'm sure that they would sell so many tickets to that. Yeah. Oh I I would go. I would go. They could have like a decom month. <laughs> and you know, the like, resorts like a, like a... could all show decoms <laughs> that'd be awesome no i mean think like an after hours situation like yeah villains, but for decoms they can oh freaking gosh. project the decoms on the castle on the castle <laughs> yes <laughs> this is a very good idea disney take notes <laughs> this is a such a good idea an after hours decom money yeah this is good wow Anyway. All right, who's next? I already said my first one, so Amanda, do you want to go? Uh, sure. Uh, okay, so the first one I came up with, so this one, as soon as y'all came up with this idea, this immediately popped into my mind because, like, people have just been talking about this for a really long time, and I think it would be fun. I don't know, uh, you know, really how it would work, but an Emperor's New Groove ride. Um, so you know the part in Emperor's New Groove where she's like, pull the lever, cronk, and then they go on that little thing. People have been talking about this for years. They're like, Disney, why don't you have this as a roller coaster? Yeah. <laughs> and I think that would be so fun. And it could be like, so when I imagine it, I imagine it being similar to like the mummy ride at Universal. Oh my gosh, yes. So how it'll, it would be like both roller coaster elements and like simple animatronic elements just like show like ease one cronk at the beginning and then you pull the lever and it drops you and then you go like it's like a quick little roller coaster, but it's like fun and cutesy. And it's in the dark and there's right. like neon. Yeah, I think that would be fun, and I also think it would fit in, maybe, possibly fit into the Mexico Pavilion at Epcot. Yeah, I mean, it's in Peru, but, but like, if they wanted to go that route, they absolutely could. Right. (laughs) Disney's not one for maintaining cultural accuracy. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, uh, that was the only place I could really think of it fitting, other than Hollywood Studios, just because you can throw anything in Hollywood Studios. They they could get rid of the Three Caballeros. There's a lot of space back there. I mean, I love the Three Caballeros ride. not touching the Three Caballeros. Yeah, I I want them to keep the Three Caballeros, but I feel like there is plenty of space in Epcot to add another ride. I think that would be great. And actually on that, uh, one of the things on my list was you should be able to meet Cusco as a llama 
and he talks <laughs> to you and he's funny like donkey and universal oh can yeah. you meet Cusco as a person he has met before but not currently like oh. it has happened but I don't think that's happening, like, at all now. Well, when they open up the Emperor's New Groove ride, they should have him as a meetable character. But, like, don't you think, like, him as, like, as a llama, just, like, in a wall, just, like, and he talks to you like Donkey does in Universal, like, him as a llama, that would be hilarious, no? But, yeah, no, it would be hilarious, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and he calls us his fly honey. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that would be fun. Well, I guess in, in his, he doesn't, he's not very complimentary. He'd probably be like, oh, get, well, he'd say his line from the movie where he's like, oh, let me guess, you have a good personality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's just sassy to you. Yeah, that would be fun. But yeah, that that was my first idea. It's, it's not as uh, detailed as yours was, but. But that's it's it. Still very, it's still a very good idea. Thank you, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, should I go next or Skylar? You haven't really had I think you could go next. Okay. My next one is Think of this. How many Disney movies, classic Disney movies about dogs are there? A so few? many. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot. You've got Fox and the Hound, Lady and the Tramp. 101 Dalmatians. You can think even into things like Air Buddies or The Shaggy Dog or um what was what was the one with Kyle Massey? <laughs> Underdog. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. God. Anyway, a lot of dog movies. Where do you see like any dog representation in the park? Pluto. Uh, Pluto, I guess. <laughs> Doug, I guess. No, no. This is what I want. <laughs> it's a dog wonderland, but basically it's a petting zoo, but oh only God. with but only with puppies. You know what? This did cross my mind. It's a it's a petting zoo but with puppies and so there's like dalmatians and then there's little little cocker spaniels and there's little golden retrievers <sighs> and then it's so cute you get to just like sit down in a room with a ton of puppies and then um there's a store and it has all the dog merch and it also has like dog outfits and dog toys and like dog supplies but it also has like dog plushes um like you know what i mean yeah mm -hmm. It's like a dog wonderland, and you get to play with puppies. It's a, And it's also like a relaxation from your day. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about this. I think that there would be, like, some ethical problems with, like, <laughs> um, what do you do when the puppies get old? Um, but what I was thinking, we could have um, 101 Dalmatians petting zoo. But there's not 101. It's just one Dalmatian. And you get <laughs> <laughs> one Dalmatian. <laughs> this is the one that makes it 101. Yeah. Um, that wasn't all, it wasn't on my list. But when I was thinking of ideas, I was like, yeah, that's that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> is it my turn? Mm -hmm. Yes. OK, so this next item on my list is fairly represented in the park, but it's represented so incredibly poorly that I want I'm 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 fixing it. So what I'm going to do. This is my pitch. What we're going to Can I get do, Can I guess the movie? You can guess it. Is it Aladdin? It is Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz I literally had the same thought when I was making mine. I like how we all thought the same. <laughs> so what we're what we're doing we're ripping up magic carpet oh my god i literally Ooh. have ripped the magic Shocker. carpet of out of my it, we ripped that it up that was an honorable mention you like okay so we rip it up we we uh we let that plaza be open it, it's beautiful we maybe put like some plants it's a, a food cart a food cart a food cart <laughs> So instead, well, what are we what are we gonna do instead? I think that we could do a magic carpet dark ride 
Mm. but make it kind of thrilling at the same time. So kind of what I was thinking is kind of like E.T. and um, Peter Pan's flight. Like, that's how the ride system would be. Like, you're flying, not like you're in a vehicle. You're floating. Mm. And it would be so fun. I agree. Um, and you could you could recycle the magic carpets of Aladdin vehicles. <laughs> yeah. So they, yeah, they don't have to completely trash everything about the ride. No. So you you keep the vehicles. You can put it on like a like an arm, and you're flying. And then it could be like the magic carpet ride, like you're flying. But they could add like little elements of the story, so it's not just like the scene. Like it can start out like that. And then it could be like Iago intercepts and you get into some hijinks. And I think that they could make it really fun, like mixing where are they put sets it? with sync. That was my that was my only thing is where would they because put it? Right across the street is Jungle Cruise and Pirates, and there's not like room on that side. Yeah, and I okay, I don't I don't want it in Adventureland. I don't think Aladdin fits there very well. Ooh, put it in the Morocco Pavilion. Yeah, there is no ride in the Morocco Pavilion. I think that they could put it in the Morocco Morocco Pavilion, but I also think that they would get some backlash like they did from Frozen because yeah. Agrabah's not a real country. Um they could put it in Epcot though. I mean they have Jasmine Meat there already. Right. That's why that's the only reason why I was thinking that they could put it there. Yeah. So they could put it there. They could put it. I like. I don't think that it would really super fit in Fantasyland. But you could also, while we're at it, we can rip up the Tomorrowland Speedway and put stuff there. Um, I don't think that Magic Carpets really fits with Tomorrowland Speedway, <laughs> but I have something that does. Oh, okay. But but um, it's not my turn. Wow, good way to get it hyped up. <laughs> um, okay, well, I'm going to steer away from the Tomorrowland Speedway, um, and I'm going to head into Animal Kingdom for my next attraction. So my favorite Disney princess is Pocahontas, and, you know, she meets, so, like, I guess there's her representation in the park, uh, apparently, there used to be a show for Pocahontas uh, that wasn't good. Um, but I want there to be a ride for Pocahontas in Animal Kingdom. And I think it's very obvious that it would need to be a boat ride, you know, just around the river bend. Uh-huh. Um, and it would be like, little canoes that you could get in and it would be like you're traveling down the river and it would be kind of similar to the frozen ride i would imagine so like again you know animatron i'm all about animatronics put animatronics in every single ride um but i want it to be like a slow moving boat would it be ride. indoors or outside um probably indoors just i mean because i don't want the the real world elements in it i just i want fake things only like fake trees and stuff. Yeah. Because I, I want, like, Grandmother fake Willow. Animals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, they could release, like, real raccoons in there if they <laughs> want. <laughs> but I want everything else to be fake. But, yeah, I want it just a peaceful canoe ride with Pocahontas. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I think that's <laughs> okay. really nice. I would get on that ride. I do love a good boat ride. And the water would smell so good. Oh, oh I yeah. I bet it would. <laughs> Anyways, Sarah, you want uh, to share your Tomorrowland Yeah, moving Speedway? back to Tomorrowland Speedway and how it needs to be ripped up. <laughs> um, Marvel. They have Marvel stuff in Universal and in California. Um, however, I think it's about time they transfer that Universal stuff over to Disney. I'm not saying transfer, like, the rides or anything like that. I say they rebrand the Universal stuff, and you could at least put a meet and greet and a store and a small food option in Tomorrowland. A good area is where tar- Tomorrowland Speedway used to be. I say used to be because it needs to be gone. <laughs> I'm only referring to it in the past tense until it is taken away. Or in Epcot, where the new Guardians of the Galaxy ride will be. 
I just think you can't meet any Marvel characters in Florida like you can in California. And I think that has a lot to do with the rights that Universal has over the characters' appearances and things like that. But it's time to let go. And <laughs> and um, they need to release that to Disney. And then they can use all that great space that Universal will have to rebrand with something great. And I'm sure that they can do that. But... Um, I think we need some Marvel stuff here. I was just thinking maybe some character meet and greets. And um, I mean, obviously rides would be great, but I couldn't think of a good one. But I think Tomorrowland Speedway would be a good location for a ride, a large scale ride. Wouldn't be a roller coaster just because Tron's going to go there. But um, but I wouldn't be mad at another roller coaster. I wouldn't. I just then there's three <laughs> roller coasters in Tomorrowland, and that just doesn't seem like something Disney would do. No, it doesn't. So I could see like, what if it was like a Rise of the Resistance esque ride, Ooh. like a trackless, futuristic kind of. You're going through Shield. Shield's been infiltrated. The Avengers yeah. are coming to, and, and it's a mixture of you know real people and it could um, be the uh what's the movie where they were all in it end game the avengers end game (laughs) end game is the one i'm referring to but it could yeah it could be like that it could be like every single person in the marvel universe well you know just like little cameos here and there or something like that i want the i want the battle scene from end game to take place around me where the Tomorrowland Speedway used to be. <laughs> yeah. You just want it, I just want it to be a reenactment. Yeah. With yeah. with a set of bleachers right in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? I think actually a live stunt show starring the Avengers would be cool. Would be awesome. Yeah. Okay, I changed my answer. Live stunt show starring the Avengers where Tomorrowland Speedway is. Yeah, they could yeah. at least do that in Island of Adventure. If they're not <laughs> and, like, I think that that would be a good idea for that area. I think that, um, I don't know what I was going to say. Anyways. Is, um, Indiana Jones the only stunt show at Disney right now? Yeah. And they're about to get rid of that, aren't they? Ooh, are they? I oh. have Maybe I not. haven't heard that, but I, I did mention that I thought it was on its last legs just because all other classic Hollywood Studios attractions have been closed. So I, I mean, did I feel like it is. I feel like it is too, which is really saddening to me, but yeah. stunt shows to me are really great and they're so entertaining. Yeah. So I would not be mad if they if they brought a new one in. Yeah. And again, you know – we said this before, entertainment is, like, Disney's forte. So, like, these stunt shows, like, really showcase Disney's ability to put on a good show. And yeah. I think a Marvel one would be great. I absolutely agree. Let's let's make that happen. Disney, yeah. get on it. We're <laughs> sending out the petition. <laughs> uh, how do you guys... Okay, I think we mentioned Tron for a second. And this is a tangent, so we might have to cut this out. Um, but how do you guys feel about Tron being in the Magic Kingdom? Does it doesn't fit, but it does fit with Tomorrowland, so Yeah, like it works with like, Tomorrowland, but it, it also seems really random. That's what I was thinking. Like if you think of Tomorrowland like as like on its own, then Tron seems to work. But if you think about it as like at the magic kingdom and then tron's there it just seems it just doesn't work as well where else would they yeah. put it hollywood studio yeah i guess <laughs> where in oh i guess if they did future world yeah but epcot's not one for like at least the future world part of it is not one for like specifically movie centric except i guess guardians of the galaxy ride's gonna be yeah, and I think they're. I think that the the new plan for Epcot, which they're kind of changing around now because of COVID money cuts, 
uh, included a lot more IP going into Epcot. Um, but they have cut a lot of that stuff. I don't what what I don't remember what exactly they were cutting, but um, a lot of stuff is not not going to plan. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, Skylar, did you have another? I do. Okay. So there's a lot of things that are represented in the Disney parks. Uh, we got the animated movies. We got the live action movies. Um, we've got the lots of stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what's not super represented? What? Broadway. And okay. so what I'm proposing, I want a Newsies street show. <gasps> and listen, this you one, had me at Newsies street show. I think that this would be incredible. And listen, this does tie into the topic because Newsies is also a movie, but I do want them to perform the songs from the Broadway show and not just the movie. Um, even though there's overlap. Um, but we we don't have to ha- get specific characters. We can just have newsies. Like, we don't yeah. have to have Jack Kelly. We don't have to have Catherine. We can just have newsies. And they come in to the street. They sing some songs. They do some dances. Like the trolley show mm-hmm. in Magic Kingdom. I picture this in Hollywood Studios. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. So, there was a newsies show at Disney California Adventure. But it wasn't Newsies. It wasn't, like, the Newsies. It was, like, they were just random Newsies. And Mickey was there. And they sang Seize the Day, but, like, they also sang, like, other songs. Mm -hmm. Was it promotion for the show? I have no idea what it was. I think it's still going on now. I have no idea, though. Um, But, yeah, that's what I, I would want in the park. I think that that would bring some energy they have the Citizens of Hollywood, which are super fun. Um, but I think, like, a little musical moment would be fun. And you know what? I'm sure there are some Broadway fans that would be drawn in to going to the park if they knew that there was a Newsy show. Yeah, but it would just be, like, a couple times a day street show type of thing. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, like, maybe two times in the morning or... Yeah, I got. I, I think I get like the trolley show or something yeah, like that. yeah. I would, I would definitely see that. That sounds super fun. But that's for someone like me who is already, like, already really loves that music and really like loves Broadway. So yeah, yeah. I I still don't know um, anything about Newsies. We asked <laughs> you to watch the movie with us. We invited you to watch the movie with us and you refused i don't think i refused i don't know what i was doing though was i in the shower (laughs) you were like on the phone with your boy Uh (laughs) well that's fair (laughs) we'll watch Um, it next time yeah Um, next time no me and sarah will watch it without you skylar (laughs) oh my god you guys can you guys can come see me in um louisiana and we can all watch it together in the bed that i may or may not have (laughs) it sounds like a plan they're not gonna give you a bed i don't know i don't know anything paul give me the news (laughs) our listeners are like who's paul (laughs) please respond to my emails paul (laughs) yeah Um, I really love the Newsies. I would love to see them sing live, even if it's just in a theme park. So, I think that sounds like a good idea. And again, I don't know anything about Newsies. I'd still stop and watch it, and I think it would be a good time. Mm-hmm. These boys do beautiful granchetes <laughs> and pirouettes they for days. Did. They pirouette on newspapers. It's like... Mm. Amazing. And they can do like these, like these acrobatics that are higher than you think. They, it looks like they're jumping on trampolines, but it's just their feet. <laughs> and all the while, they're wearing these little scruffy little scruff outfits and little, little caps, little caps, and they have dirt on their faces. And they have I, newspaper pouches. I do like all of that in a man. So. If that's not Me sex too. appeal, what is? 
dirty, scruffy little hat boys. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is a good idea. And it's your turn now. Oh, me? <laughs> you. Okay. Um, Wait, so, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, sure, sure, I'll go. Yeah. Um, so the next thing, I want to... You know, I actually don't have any clue where this show would fit in. Uh, maybe Magic Kingdom. I think this could work in Magic Kingdom. Um, but yeah, I, I want to. I want a show, and I want it to be not necessarily about Hercules, but I want Hercules represented in the park. Oh, I thought of this too. Um, I also thought of Hercules. Yes, but it wasn't but, on my list. But I was thinking it wasn't about on it. my list either. But I right. was thinking about it. Um, but I don't necessarily want it to be about Hercules. Like it could be if Disney wanted it to be. But what I want is I want the show to be completely hosted, sang, danced, performed by the muses. Okay, this oh. was going to be my thought too. Yes, and I think it would be you know quirky, funny, cute, a good time if they took on the task of doing like a quick funny overview musical of greek mythology (gasps) and they had the task of making it like family friendly which would be so difficult to do but i think it would be hilarious because then like the adults would be entertained because like you know they probably know all like the the bad greek mythology stuff but the kids aren't you know seeing all that it's just like a funny cute show to them Mm -hmm. but like the muses would be so like powerful singers and performers and it would be funny i think yes this would be a great show this as a great opportunity for audience participation yeah like perhaps they get audience members to be a part of the show like you're gonna be zeus and you're gonna be athena you know what i mean yeah like i i could see them working that angle and then having little quips to say oh and they're so sassy and i am in love with this idea yeah i i really liked this idea i think out of out of all of them this was probably my favorite idea and it wasn't the first thing i came up with but when i came up with this i was like oh my god this is amazing because okay i haven't seen the frozen show in person but i've like watched it online and kind of like the sense of humor that the uh host of the frozen show have i think that would work with the hercules show i don't know if y'all are familiar with it um but like just like the way they make jokes where it's like it appeals to adults but like it's still like funny and entertaining for kids like i think that would work for hercules Greek mythology would absolutely be like a great topic i don't know like and the muses are just like oh my gosh I can't get over it. This is a very good idea. Yeah. Why isn't there a Greek pavilion in um in Epcot? Yeah, no, if, the, if there it. was, they should definitely add that. Uh so yeah, actually get rid of Canada. Off. We don't need Canada. <laughs> There's like a lot get of Get rid space. of the American adventure. Okay. Yeah. The Acropolis. There's so much space in between some of the pavilions. I think that they said that they have enough room to include nine more pavilions. So, oh, that would Greece. be very crowded. Greece should be one of them. But you would need kind of an amphitheater, and that's why I think the American Pavilion would be great. Yeah. Because you can use that amphitheater right along the water. Beautiful. Perfect. Stunning. Get rid of America. I'm sick of it. You can't put America in America. Right. And also, the American Adventure sucks. <laughs> okay. I and the Hercules thought- show would be so much better. Wait. American Pavilion has two auditorium style theaters one indoors one outdoors and one's being used for something like randomly seasonally they'll have music there and then the other one the galaxy what were y'all there when that happened no they used to have like a guardians of the galaxy show where like gamora and (sighs) what's his face would like go and dance on the stage to like uh to like uh 80s music (sighs) I don't remember. And why? <laughs> I feel like I didn't make this up, but at the same time, like, I might have. It was called, like, Guardians of the Galaxy Awesome Mix Live or something. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, Hercules show would be much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, or at least, you know, you could, 
if you really wanted to keep the America Pavilion because you just made that new restaurant, <laughs> cut it in half and have the back half be the American Pavilion. You know what I mean? The back half and then the front half along the water can be the Greece Pavilion. Yeah. Yeah, because that's but what I mean, Greece is. But I do think It that... is on the water. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a bunch of islands. Yeah. But I yeah, I think okay, so yeah, first step is add Greece somewhere into Epcot. I don't really care where, just add it, but it needs to be big because I want this to be like a fully like developed thing, not just like uh, not just like a street show. Right. Right. Like I want this to be like a huge theater. <laughs> like as big as Beauty and the Beast Live. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. I agree completely. This is a such good idea and I think it would be best suited outdoors. Yes. But if it's indoors, that's, you know, whatever. It'd be fine. Um, but, like, this is a, such a such a good idea. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, my next one is kind of not super thought out. Let me know if you have any um, big ideas for it. Lilo and Stitch's Hawaiian roller coaster ride. Aww. I came up with a Lilo and Stitch ride, too. <laughs> Um, it mine was a roller coaster and a water ride put together. Question mark. A water ride, water ride, yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the Hawaiian roller coaster ride, and it is a water ride, but it also kind of is a roller coaster. It's not something super daring. It's kind of like a kitty coaster, but also you do splash. Yeah. Okay. I also, my Lilo and Stitch ride wasn't very well thought out. Um, I, literally, the bullet points I have underneath it is, I don't know how they do this, but I want us to be on a surfboard with Stitch. Um, I want Stitch playing Elvis songs. <laughs> I want to be chased by aliens, and that's all I have. <laughs> Sounds like a good time to me. I am. I'm quite upset that they got rid of stitch's great escape even though that oh. ride disturbed <laughs> me i did like that stitch had something yeah did it fit into tomorrowland no. not really i also hated it yeah i, I didn't, didn't like i didn't the, like that i didn't like the smell yeah i didn't like the smell and i feel like okay so now that that it's closed and it's just like a stitch meet and greet um why are we wasting all that space for a stitch meet and greet yeah, um, they should definitely put something there. I, and I thought they had plans to. Yeah, I thought they had planned to put, like, a Wreck-It Ralph thing there. They still... Wait, hold on. They do have plans. I know this. I forget what they're putting there. They do have plans, though. Is it Wreck-It Ralph, or did I make that up? I don't... I don't... That see. doesn't sound super familiar to me. Yeah, the last thing I that I found said it was for, um... Wreck It Ralph, but that was in 2018, so I don't know if there's anything new. I guess I don't know what I was thinking. Oh no no no! Okay, this one was from um, March. Says work slated to begin on rumored Wreck It Ralph attraction, so it's still just rumored to be Wreck It Ralph. Okay, but they are doing work on it. It is gonna be something. It's gonna be something. We just don't know what. Yeah, they just recently got permits for demolition of the theater. I think that's what I um, saw recently, was that they had permits for demolition. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, I guess I didn't ever hear what was going to go in there. <laughs> okay, what yes. else do you guys have? I have a couple more, but they're not very fleshed um, out. Who's Who's next? Skylar? I have okay. I have one more big idea, and then I have a couple like small meet and greet ideas. Um, but for my big idea, this is another one like Aladdin that does have theme park representation in like a kind of. It's like they. It has an area, but it's tangled. Not- it's tangled. <laughs> oh my it's gosh, like, I have this. I, I just wrote, Tangled needs more than just a bathroom. That's I all have, I wrote. I have an idea for Tangled. I also have an idea. Okay, I'll all say, right. do, do you want to say your idea and I'll tell you if it's the same idea as mine or? You can say yours and I'll tell okay. you if it's the same. <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking I really want a Tangled boat ride, boat dark ride. Ooh. Aww. And so 
does it work over by the bathrooms? Not really because you have Small World right there and that's just another boat ride. Um, so you could try to fit it into Fantasyland somewhere in New Fantasyland or um, you can try to fit it, you could put it next to the bathrooms, but you could also maybe put it in the Germany Pavilion at Epcot, which I know Ooh. some people are really against putting like IP in the World Showcase, but um, I feel like it. The, the story does take place in Germany and I feel like if they don't like completely like take the pavilion over with tangled stuff like they did with frozen um i think that it would be nice but okay i think that the the main thing that i'm imagining for this ride is that is the lantern scene Mm -hmm. um because i'm imagining like how they did pirates of the caribbean when you go down the flume and it opens up into that big yeah. area and it feels like you're like literally in, like right in front of a ship and it's nighttime and it seems so vast I feel like they could utilize some sort of like um projection technology to make it look like there's more lanterns in the room than there are and mm-hmm. then also like I think that they could do it really well and I think that that would be really heartwarming and then like maybe you could see like Rapunzel and Flynn in a boat like next to yours but they can't make it look like the kiss the girl ariel and oh no ew because that type of animatronic is yucky yeah i don't like that but i think uh i think they would probably do a little bit better in the future (laughs) they've cut they've come a ways but i think that that would just be like really beautiful and heartwarming I think it would be too. That's one of like my favorite scenes from any Disney movie. Yeah. It's so pretty. And Tangled is my favorite princess movie. I do really love Tangled. And I think that I think that the rest of the ride, I don't know if I want if I would want it to go through the story or if I would want a new story because I do want that lantern scene. Um, but you could also probably fit that into, a, like, a new story. You could put that right. at the end of any story. It's just, yeah. like, them celebrating. Right, oh, yeah. they do it every year, don't they? Yeah, well, they were doing it every year to find her, so. Right. But, I mean, like, they could keep cute. doing it yeah. afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> sure. But I think um, that... Sorry? No, you're good. You can keep going. Oh. Have you guys seen Tangled the series? Yeah, I did. Okay. I've seen some of it. So the animation in that series is very, like, stylized, Mm -hmm. and I really love the way that Rapunzel paints and draws. Like, I love that art style. Yeah. And I think that they could incorporate some, like, stylized elements like that into an attraction, and it would be really cool. I do love the idea of that boat scene. I'm just wondering if a boat would really work for like it wouldn't obviously work in the tower that Uh, doesn't make any (laughs) sense or like in the forest really so we don't like very limited scenes that you could really do we're not we don't have to think about it i mean i mean (laughs) unless unless you know you weren't in the tower you could just like see the tower from the water yeah i guess so yeah i didn't really work out those kinks i just thought about the i just one scene scene. yeah Yeah. it could just be that scene just one (laughs) giant room and you just go in a circle around all the lanterns honestly yeah Yeah. it could just be like motor boats motor boats bumper (laughs) boats i meant bumper boats (laughs) and but like you don't bump each other but you just like get to control your boat and you go around and then yeah I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> what was your idea, Amanda? Um, we we didn't have the same idea, but I like that idea. Um, so I was thinking, and I think mine may actually be able to go in the Tangled area in Magic Kingdom. I, I don't know, though, because I don't know how much room there is over there. I was thinking about the Snuggly Duckling. Oh, like having, as a restaurant? Yeah, but ah. the only problem is I want the Snuggly Duckling to actually be like a bar and pub. <laughs> and Magic Kingdom don't really do alcohol like that. <laughs> so, I don't know. 
But, I mean, if they made it a table service, you could at least go in and, I mean, you could get wine. But, like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you could, yeah. But I think. They have the Gaston's Pub. Um, yeah. Which really okay. only has, like, what, two types of drinks and a cinnamon roll. Yeah, but I mean, it could be similar to that, like just like mm-hmm. a little service where you can go get snacks, and they just have like specialty like mocktails. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I think that would be cute. Like they could have something a la butter butterbeer, but yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I really like that too. I also like that idea, and let's I let's make an entire tinkled land. Oh yes. yeah, I would love that. Okay, so I think I don't think I made this up. I might have. But I think that when they were originally coming up with the concepts for New Fantasyland, Gaston's Tavern was supposed to be the Snuggly Duckling. Well then, gosh darn it, why didn't they do it? I hate it when Disney doesn't follow through on their initial <laughs> plans. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think they should have both. Because I really like Gaston's. Um, but, you know, I, I think I would like the Snuggly Duckling better. But now that they have Gaston's, I want both. Yeah. It just seems like Beauty and the Beast has a lot of space. Yeah. There's, like, a lot of real estate occupied by Beauty and the Beast. And, sure, it's great. But, like, you need two meals? Two (laughs) two food locations? Yeah. I wouldn't be mad if... They turned Gaston's Tavern into the Snuggly Duckling. It's just like, then you got the bathrooms on one side, you got the Snuggly Duckling on the other side. It's well, so much. Well, okay, so her tower's over there, but like it could be like the Snuggly, because she has to like go to the Snuggly Duckling. Yeah. So it could be like a little ways away. But also, like, I don't know what kind I like the town bathroom kind of thing. I don't know what. If that's supposed another to be another thing that well, I were you saying something? Well, it wasn't really about that. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of about something else. Okay, I was just gonna say when we were going okay, when we worked at Disney <laughs> and we first started and we took our little tour of Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um we went into the restaurant that I think is in Liberty Square. Um, I did not do that in mine. I maybe also did not this do that. maybe this was not the the everybody thing. Maybe this was just a me thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was it was my solo tour around Magic Kingdom. Magic. Um, I think if you're based in Magic Kingdom, you have a special Magic Kingdom tour. Okay, that that might have been what it was. It was a separate one. Um, but we went into this restaurant, and I think it was the Columbia Harbor House. Yeah, Columbia Harbor House, and the back side of that restaurant is like in the Tangled section because it I specifically is. remember that. And so, if they could just close off the front side of it in Liberty Whoa. Square and make the back side the front side, oh, then man. that could be the Snuggly Duckling. Oh man, <laughs> that's a great You're idea. You're thinking from the inside out here, Amanda. Yeah. You're not thinking from a guest perspective. Now you're thinking from the employee perspective, and I love it. You're yeah. really thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, and Disney! You know what? I'm calling you out again. Get on it! <laughs> Literally every time I've ever been into Columbia Harbor House, I've never eaten there. But like, if I've just like ventured in there, no one is ever in there. No one's ever Perfect. in there. And you know what? They, they have a boring vegan option, so get rid of it. They also yeah. like Columbia Harbor House is Liberty Square, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. They already have the Horseshoe Tavern, which is also in Liberty Square. And they have, like, the chicken and – the was it chicken and waffles? It's like a waffle. Sleepy bowl. Hollow. Sleepy Hollow. We don't need this many foods. Right. That food could be yeah. the Snuggly Duckling. And it could be a full quick service restaurant instead and of a little they, snack stand. And they also have the, um, the like, fruit market. What am mm-hmm. I thinking of? That's also in Liberty Square, right? I'm sure they do have one I of do those. Think so. You know what I'm talking about? They have like a little fruit stand. I don't know. It's by Hall of Presidents. They have too much food there. And again, 
shop with America in America. Of course, the America in America has all the food options. Of course. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, just flip that restaurant, you know, just pluck it out, turn it around. <laughs> Easy. Everyone knows Easy. you can just pluck it out and turn it around. All you have to do is is put doors on the other side. And- well, there are there already are doors on the other side. That's what, like, made me think. Like, they're already doors. They're just, like, emergency exits. Oh, you just on the the, back like, side. switch the alarm. Yeah, just switch, switch, the, alarm. switch the alarm system. It. No, I don't think it's like an alarm thing, but it's just another outlet into the park. Right. But, yeah, just, you know, put the facade on the other side and make the side in Liberty Square not an entrance. <laughs> I mean, I think it's pretty simple, honestly. Yeah, I think we've gone over it enough times for Yeah, and it. oh my god, and they can have somebody playing the piano in there. Yeah, oh, or yeah. they can have one of those self-playing pianos. That, but I kind of want someone with a hook hand playing it. I think that would be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Disney um, can do it. Yeah, Disney can do it. You're right. It could be a it. it could be a self playing piano, but they could just have that man sitting there <laughs> pretending <laughs> like he's playing. <laughs> no, he's just sitting. Can there. I be hired to be that job? <laughs> yeah, he's just sitting there, <laughs> <laughs> and he just has his hook hand, and he's just like, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm but this bl- this is literally a good idea. all three of us thought of Tangled needing more than just a bathroom. So yeah. I am glad for that. Um, I will say, though, it would kind of mess up um, the little Tangled section a little bit because... You have to do a little bit of reorganizing. Well, that section of the park is a designated quiet space in Magic Kingdom. Don't know if y'all knew that. What? Um, (laughs) Yeah, like every park has like a designated quiet. What does that mean? It's like just a spot where there's not anything like there's no restaurants or rides so like it's not busy it's just a place where people can rest so like if people have like like if children are getting like overwhelmed really easily like there are just designated quiet spaces in every single park and the tangled like in front of the tangled bathrooms is a designated quiet space in magic kingdom so if they did that it would kind of ruin that because then it would be the entrance to a restaurant but they would just have to find somewhere else for the designated quiet space. <laughs> right. Like where Agrabah used to be. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there is a lot of room in front of Jungle Cruise. They could put it there. Yeah. yeah. Or where Tomorrowland Speedway <laughs> used to be. <laughs> used to be. Yeah. Because it's or no longer going to be there. The tree house. Come on now. Yeah. That already should be a designated quiet space. Like it might, it might be. There might be multiple ones in Magic. Palm Shore Island. That whole island is a designated quiet space. Yeah, except for the kids that are running around screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My final idea was a simple one. Just one, one sentence. That's all that's needed. <laughs> Change Soren to Big Hero Six themed. Um, Ooh. <laughs> I don't know how it would work, but I'm in. <laughs> I do love Big Hero 6, but I also really love Soren. But like what if it was like Big Hero 6 themed? <laughs> what I love about Soren is the smells. Keep the smells. Yeah, the, the smells are fine. Like we can incorporate some Big Hero 6 smells. <laughs> the smells of San Francisco. Oh, yeah. You know that scene where they go up and there's all the hot air balloons? Yeah. It makes me cry. <laughs> and I want to feel that with <laughs> with them, with Hero and Baymax. Yeah. I want to be there with them um above the city on the balloons. And I think Soren is the only way that this can be accomplished. I also think Soren needs an update. They need some time with that screen to really clean, to clean it. Clean it. Oh my <laughs> God. To really clean it. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and I think that the ride mechanics could be fine. Just change the video and it could get a little like, you know, like, like you're like, sometimes he, Baymax gets into his little like, like, I don't know. Sometimes you go faster and sometimes you're just like viewing the beautiful view, but sometimes you're like, flying away from someone and you're like whoa 
and then like the rest of the big hero six gang team like are around as well flying and they're like hey hero and they're like hey guess who <laughs> guess who those characters were anyway stuff like that like i don't know i really like big hero six and I it needs think, more representation i think that sure. so i think epcot is a good location for it and i think that soren could be big hero six themed yeah um i think that they could do more big hero six representation i don't necessarily know if i would want soren to go or if i would want big hero six to be in the land but i think that they could definitely add a big hero six attraction because why is soren in the land pavilion shouldn't it be in the sky pavilion Thank you. I will be here all night. <laughs> I want someone to edit in a laugh track right after I say that. <laughs> no, we're actually going to edit out our laughter. <laughs> so it's just silence okay, afterwards. Can you at least edit no. in crickets? Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Something. We, it could also go where uh, the Tomorrowland Speedway was. Uh what yeah literally (laughs) so many things that's a huge chunk of real estate honestly where the tomorrowland speedway was three of these rides could be there yeah we can put the stunt (laughs) show um i i did have one more ride yeah um did y'all have anything else I had one more thing. Let's hear them, ladies. Yeah, you you can go ahead, Skylar, because I think I shared Snuggly Duckling last. Okay, so my kind of last idea is for a meet and greet. Um, And they used to have these characters meet during a little special event called Star Wars Weekends. However, these characters are nowhere to be found these days because of the incredible theming of Batu, the characters of the original trilogy don't really get um get to shine at all Mm -hmm. and so what i want i want luke princess leia han meet and greet and you know what darth vader has a meet and greet yeah yeah if he's if he's alive in this universe so should they yeah and i know what you're thinking i know what the what the fans are thinking oh but what it's not gonna look like them because they're real they're real actors well they have ray so take that yeah what i have to say to those people is shut your mouth yeah but i really (laughs) want to meet princess leia and luke and han i do have them that would be good they could put them in launch bay why not yeah or at least c-3po oh my gosh c-3po yeah i think that they've actually had c-3po uh that might have just been also at star wars weekends Mm -hmm. um but yeah i want to meet those characters i want more original trilogy representation i think that it was kind of a weird choice to theme Batu to the new trilogy and not to the original one because like when people think of Star Wars they don't think of like the new trilogy they like people don't love Star Wars because of like the new trilogy and Mm -hmm. I think that like Rey and Kylo Ren are cool but like I don't know I mean I I guess they they probably just did that because Disney had a part in making that yeah probably that makes sense but I agree. I, I want the, the originals. I <laughs> agree. And there's so many there's so many locations where they could meet in Hollywood Studios because as we all know, Hollywood Studios is just Star Wars land in disguise as old Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. So they could they could meet at Launch Bay, they could meet outside Jedi training. Honestly, like Luke They could, could re- replace the Jedi training. Yeah. With a meet and greet. Don't yeah. they have something like Jedi training, but it's in um, 
it's in Galaxy's Edge. I don't. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking. I I'm. Th- I might be thinking of California, where they have something like Jedi training in Galaxy's Edge because they don't have. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. California yeah. has a Galaxy's Edge, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Never mind. So it, it might be there. I don't Scratch, know. I haven't heard about it for hours. Scratch what I said. Uh, they could also just meet where the Tomorrowland Speedway was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, honestly, I mean, honestly, they would fit into Future, not Future World. Uh, Tomorrowland. What's that place called? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it would be a little weird because, you know, there already is a Star Wars park. Um, a whole Star care. Wars park. They're milking yeah. that Star Wars for every penny it's worth. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do have one more ride. And actually, I, I, like, I know I've been joking around, but actually this one would work where the Tomorrowland Speedway was. <laughs> <laughs> I think... In fact, I'm I'm buckling down on this. Replace the Tomorrowland Speedway with this ride. A Wally trackless ride system. Aww. Oh, that would be so good. Oh yes. Oh my gosh. Like Rise of the Resistance, but Wally, and it's futuristic. Oh my god. It's cute. There there is no Wally representation in the park. Oh my gosh. Oh, I want to get on this ride right little, now. Um, they had a little like Wally play area in Epcot. What the heck? What is that? That sounds weird. It was, I don't know if it was for one of the festivals, but it was like a playground. It had like a sign of Wally on it. I don't know. Okay, if I well that's like nothing. Sign on it. Okay. No, I like Anyways. this idea. I do yeah. like this idea. I, I, I don't have it. any like scenes or like I don't know what it would be about, but I want a trackless ride system because I think that's futuristic and like fits in with Wally. And and also like he just like he's, he's trackless. he glides like, yeah, yeah like he's trackless so I I think that would work I don't, again I don't know what they would do with it it could be huge though because it's going to be the size of the Tomorrowland, Tomorrowland Speedway. Speedway yes and um it could be like on the ship and stuff and then you could have like yeah. scenes where you're like floating through space or at least you're looking out a space window yeah. Eve could be there. Oh, it could it could be very similar to Rise of the Resistance. Like, okay, it could even be like you know how Rise of the Resistance has all the like pre-show stuff. It could be similar to that. Like, you could get on like a ship, and then it could transport you to the main ride, and like things like that. I mean, obviously, that would be like literally just Rise of the Resistance, but Wally. So maybe don't do that. But it could be <laughs> yeah. I don't. It could be like I don't think the Wally ride needs like quite that much introduction. Yeah, not quite that much. But maybe like a video. It could, could be. Play. It could be cool. <laughs> <laughs> it could be fun, and I think oh, that it's so cute idea. It could also work in Epcot because Wally has that like, um, environmentality message that's yeah. kind of similar to like that's true the land. And um, it, it could also be like you're working with Wally to get the plant to the captain or something like that. And the computer is trying to get you. And so you have the plant just like you have E.T. in your basket. You have the plant in your car. Yes. And you're trying to get it to the to like the captain who's going to take you guys back to Earth when he sees that like Wally found life or Eve found life. But yeah. like the computer's trying to stop you because the computer is trying to keep people in space. You know the theme, the whole plot. Yeah. Oh my god! And there could be like a really cool, like I don't again, I don't know how they would do this, but it would be really, really cool if there was a scene where you could like see Earth. Like yeah. it was like you were like in out, space and like you like could out a see the Earth spit. No, like it's the whole thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're in space okay. and you see the planet. <laughs> like spaceship Earth. Like, I want them to actually blast us off in space. Yeah. 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 The Disney experience. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this I'm is paying all this money. You better idea. blast me into space. <laughs> well, they have Mission Space already, so. Right. Wait, they could replace one. Mission Space with the Wally <gasps> oh, ride. yeah. Yes. I'm so for that. Yeah, you know we support that. <laughs> we're, we're, okay, so on this list... Let's forget about all the things we proposed. Let's just focus on the rides <laughs> we're getting rid of. 
getting rid of carpets, getting rid of Tomorrowland Speedway, and now we're getting rid of Mission Space. And that's we're also way. getting rid of the entire America Pavilion. Let's not forget. And we're also getting rid of the <laughs> uh, whatever Liberty Tavern, Liberty Inn. Uh, it'll be a horror house. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was close. <laughs> yeah, this is good though. This is a good list of stuff. We got some good ideas. We can totally revamp Disney. Bob or Josh? Who's in charge these days? Bob or Josh? Uh, job. Bosh. Hey, boys? <laughs> Wait. Boys, li- boys, listen up. I want to be on your Imagineering squad. I've got the ideas. Yeah. Hire us. We are hired as, like, the three of us, though. Like, you yeah. can't just take one. Sorry. We do you have to have all of us. <laughs> we get our own separate paychecks. Yes. Yes. Okay. I think we've done a great job here today. Yeah. I would visit the park that we imagine. The park we create yeah. is the best version that Disney can be and <laughs> and hopefully will become. It's genius. Yeah. When when they listen to this episode. Mhm. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that's I think that's all we have to say for today. All right. I think it's it's time to sign off. Already? Already. An hour later. <laughs> yeah. Womp. All right. As always, uh follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Fast Pass and Furious. And on Twitter at Fast Pass Furious. Use hashtags Fast Pass and Furious and hashtag TBTF TSTF. We love you so so much. And remember to give us a five star review if you're listening on um, Apple Podcast. Yes. Or if it's any if it's anything less than a five star review, don't uh, DM us and let us know you hate us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only give us the review if it's five stars, and if it's anything less than five stars, um, you can just DM us. Your critiques will li- will listen. We do encourage <laughs> hate mail. We do. But only if it's directed towards Skylar. Uh... <laughs> I let you stay in my house. <laughs> Kitty. Kick her out. <laughs> yeah, Skylar, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Our sign off. Yes, I guess. Okay. The bigger, bigger the, the family, family. the strong, strong, stronger the family. family. Bye. Somebody put the outro in. This is your reminder to put the outro in. I'm in love with the interviewer. <laughs> I am Groot. <laughs> Da 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 da